Hi, welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Antonetti, and we're looking at the rule of faith. The rule of faith, this is part two, and we're going to be digging into the scriptures. And like I said, there's so much food uh, as I continue to study, because I study every day as much as I can uh, to bring you the truth. That's what Talk Straight Bible is all about. Um, we, and like I said, we all have our times where we have our faults and our learning, but as students, we have to go back and recheck what we've learned and try to straighten out those things which need to be corrected. Well, let's go to part two. And um, we're going to go to, again, the verse of scripture that started it all. So we're going to go here to Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So trust comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through a word proclaimed about the Messiah, the King James. So faith comes by hearing the word and hearing by the word of God. And remember that every verse of scripture that pertains to salvation, uh, the salvation of God, is concerning fallen men being redeemed by the Messiah. And so the focus point of this study and even the scripture that we just read is on Christ, the Christ of God, the Messiah that was to come and save us from our sins. Well, I want to first talk about the church still being at the baby stage concerning the trust of God. Um, this is my personal observation. Uh, growing up, you know, in Christianity, as far as the last 37 years, I got uh, saved, converted when I was 23 years old. And um, it's, been, it's been a bit there. So my walk with God has been, as with everyone else, a learning process. Um, however, I desire more of the Word of God and to go deeper, as deep as I can, as deep as He allows me to go, to learn the great things that He has placed in this book. This book is deep, and the deep calls to the deep. I remember discussing with a pastor concerning the, you know, the Word of God, and um, uh, he finally came out and told me, you know, keep it simple, keep it simple. Well... I went down to my office and I wept in my heart. And as I was sitting there just thinking about it and talking to God, you know, I have a lot of books. Uh, I have a great library that God has blessed me with. And I'm just blessed. But out of all the books in my library, like I said, many, there was this one book that stood out and it was The Doctrines of God by Lockyer. Uh, you may want to look Lockyer up. Um, Herbert Lockyer, he wrote a tons, a tons of information about the Bible. As a matter of fact, he has about 17 books, a whole uh, encyclopedia about all the alls of the Bible. Excellent, 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 excellent. If you took every book away from my, uh, from my library, those would be enough to hold me to Jesus comes back. But anyway, I took out the one uh, that said doctrine. I was just kind of just, you know, uh, flipping through the pages, and my eyes fell upon a little poem that he used to illustrate the point of doctrine. And I'll never forget it. God spoke to me concerning what was said to me that day about keeping things simple, where I desire the deeper things of God. And the poem said this, where there are shallow waters, children play. But where there are deeper oceans, giants swim. And the Lord spoke to my heart. And he said, I have made you to swim in deeper oceans. And so I thank God that he has given me that privilege. But the church is still at the baby stage. Why? The first thing to understand about the church is that the doctrine of faith, as we pray for God to teach us, we do not go deeper because we don't know how to go deeper. We are afraid to go deeper or we're afraid of what people may think when we go deeper. Because when you come out from the deeper things, you're going to show things that are not seen or heard, and they're going to say, where did you get this from? And you know what's the prideful part of that? That when people hear not something new, but something hidden, they act as though they know everything by saying, I've never heard that before. Well, who made them God that they have heard everything before? We're still learning things. I am still learning things, deeper things, and things that I probably would never even bring out, but for my own edification. And let me tell you what it's done for me as far as really growing deeper. I have fallen so much more in love with Christ, not by feelings or not by an estimate of my emotions, but because I know him. 
I know him better in a better way, and my faith has increased because the word of God is being, re be being revealed to me in such a way that I know it's God according to his word, and I say, God, why are people not teaching this? Well, again, God has given us the deeper things that we might study them, but most people restrict themselves to certain commentaries. And folks, let me tell you something. Commentaries I have, plenty of commentaries, and I do use them. I go and I search out things, but there are things that I know that they have not discovered because no one person has discovered everything. But they give you a good layer that you're able to work with to go deeper into the deeper resources of God's Word. So we have to get out of the outer layer, out, layer at one point and begin to study. Now the reason that the church is in the infant stage of knowing the true faith that comes from the principles of the Word of God is because men do not like to dig deeper because they believe that they will confuse the church rather than edify it. Folks, this is fraudulent. This is nonsense, and it's a waste of valuable resources that are given to us through God's Word. Amen. I remember growing up, in the, as you know, just got into the church, and I told you before, if, if you don't remember, I tell you, I'll tell you again. I, I, God just gave me a love for, for Bible, you know, numerology, what it means. God gave me a love for the deeper things, you know, to go deeper into the Word. And I shared it with a mature Christian, and he said, watch yourself. Watch that you don't, you know, uh, go crazy. And, that. and he was pretty much saying that. And that did not ring well with me. And I began to study and continue study. And today, 36 years later, I'm still here. Thank God. God has not given me the spirit of fear but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And you can ask me whatever you want, a, qu a question in the Bible, and I will try my best to answer it according to the Word of God. Now, also, what I, in what I what's interesting is that digging deeper, that means that we have to ask God and spend time with God in the Word of God because He has things He wants to reveal to us. Now, Deuteronomy 29, 29, we're saying, how is this the rule of faith? Well, let's dig deeper. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and our children, watch this, forever, that we may do all the words of the law. I like what the complete Jewish Bible says. If you can get your hand on the complete Jewish Bible, it is, it is a beautiful, beautiful translation right side the King James. Things which are hidden, watch this, same, same scripture, Deuteronomy 29, except in the, in the Bible of the Jewish is 28, but doesn't matter right now. Things which are hidden belong to Adonai our God, but the things that, we have, that have been revealed to us and our children forever so that we may observe the words of the Torah. Now understand, this is speaking of the Torah because it is the book of Deuteronomy, which is the fifth book of the law of God, the Torah. And I want to remind you that everything that was taught in the New Testament by the prophets, uh, uh, you know, I'm, what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Apostle Paul, Peter, you know, they were prophets, they were proclaimers of the truth, and Jesus himself all came from the Torah. The Torah is still and will always be the law of God. And even the Pharisees accused Jesus of, of, of saying, you have, uh, you know, you have taken away the law. You, by the way you're speaking, you're doing away with the Lord. He said, the law. He said, I did not come to do away with the law, but to fulfill it. And I, he said, I'll tell you, not even one jot, an iota of the law, the smallest tittle of the law, shall not be taken away. And everything will be fulfilled at the death of Christ. Now remember also, going back to the rule of faith, we have to understand that knowledge of God is important. To the point that he says, my people are destroyed because of a lack or a want of knowledge. Because, watch this, because you reject knowledge, Hosea 4, 6, I will also reject you as priests for me. Because you forgot the Torah of your God. I will also forget your children. Wow. When I read that, that scared me. It put fear in my heart. Why so many of our children are messed up? Now, I'm not saying that 
that every teaching that you give them is going to keep them in the Lord. But one thing is, is as far as um, going astray forever. No, the Bible tells us train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they should not depart from it. But watch this now. He, continue. Hosea 4, 7. The more they increase in number, the more they sinned against me. I will change their glory into shame. And I was thinking about today, the church, the body of Christ. There may be, you know, so many of us, millions and millions, and we may be increasing, but are we truly holding the word of God? Are we, are we cisterns? Is our system cracked that everything we learn just seeps out and we forget about it? Folks, we need to ask God to help us to keep our systems in check. Uh, Hosea 4, 8, the next verse, they feed on the sin of my people and are greedy for crimes. Wow. What crimes can the people of God commit? They forget the word of God and they go after things that God said no. That is a crime before God. And it does not produce faith. Now, which, what, what does he tell us? He tells us in Jeremiah 33, 3, call out to me and I will answer you. I will tell you great things, hidden things of which you are unaware. Wow. There's the, there it is. Call upon God. And that's, listen, I do that. Listen, I call upon God. I say, Lord, please teach me. You have to show me. But also, you know what? I'm reminded you need to sit down and take out your study and study. It's not just about sitting there and waiting for God to pour this revelation into you. That's not going to happen. You may get some concepts because we grow. But the, the only thing, the concept and the precepts of God's word is the only thing that solidifies the mind. Remember that Paul said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination, every thought that has set itself up, uh, working to set itself up against the knowledge of Elohim, against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity Every imagination, every thought, every precept, every concept of the mind that stands against the faith of the word of God. It's a warfare. And therefore we have to fight. Now look what he tells us. That we need to move from the sluggish way of understanding and become teachers, not just of milk, but of solid food, meat. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 11 down through 14 says this. We have much to say about this subject. What subject? Well, let's watch. But it is hard to explain because you have become sluggish in understanding. Oh, how do I see that in our day? It's like if I sit down to talk to some Christians about certain things and I say something, they go, huh? Huh? And I'm like, it's so simple. It's in the word of God. Do you understand this word? What I just, no. No. Take out your dictionary. You got an iPhone. You got an iPad. Get in and study and learn what words mean. Learn what concepts are. There's nothing wrong with it. You might find yourself becoming more like Jesus in every way. For although by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the very first principles of God's word all over again, exclamation point. You need milk, not solid food, exclamation point. He's making the point. Verse 13, Hebrews 5, and I'm still there. Anyone who has to drink milk is still a baby. Just look around you. People say they're growing in the knowledge of God, but some people don't know anything about the Bible. Some people don't even read the Bible. They wait for someone else to teach them about the Bible rather than them open the Bible for themselves so that when others are speaking about the Bible, you can discern whether it is true or not. Anyone who has to drink milk is still a baby without experience in applying the word about righteousness. They know nothing about the word of righteousness, but solid food is for the mature, for those whose faculties have been trained. There it is. By continuous exercise to distinguish good from evil. 
I spend most of my time looking and thinking and understanding the Word of God. What does God have to say about this in my life versus what I think about it? You leave a person alone, they'll formulate all kinds of philosophies, leaving the principles, the first principles of the doctrine behind and moving on to maturity. This is faith. We move according to the doctrines of God. If you don't know what God has to say about eschatology, the study of last day things, about election, about sanctification, about sin, about angels, about God, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the church, all of these things are doctrines, and we need to know what God is saying. By doing so, not only do you increase in knowledge, but your faith of the Word, and because of the Word, begins to move. It begins to grow. It begins to establish you. Like the tabernacle was established. It was tight. It was strong. Therefore, Hebrews 6, 1 through 3. Therefore, leaving behind, this is what, look, this is what the word is saying. Leaving behind the initial lessons about the Messiah. Let's go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of turning from works that lead to death. One, trusting God. Two, and instruction about washing, you know, uh, and the resurrection or baptism and the resurrection from the dead and eternal punishment. And God willing, this we will do. It's time to grow up and know what you believe and live what you believe. Because a lot of people are still depending upon their emotions, their feelings, you know what? You know what I hate the most? I hate the most when I what I hear when I hear Christians say, oh, this verse of scripture means this to me. Without reading the context and the content. If you know what the Bible says about something, then you can apply its righteousness to you. Now, let's talk about the difference between faith and presumption. The rule of faith versus the rule of the law of presumption. This is the understanding of what presumption is in a basic form. A legal presumption is a conclusion based on a particular set of facts combined with established laws, logic, or reasoning. Watch this. It is a rule of law which allows a court to assume a fact is true until it is rebuttal by the greater, what they call preponderance of the evidence of it against it. Now, watch what this, this is saying here. This is a fact. This happened. We saw um, a person take a pocketbook, <laughs> and all of a sudden, he robbed the pocketbook until you find out that it was his mother's pocketbook, and she needed it, and she left it somewhere. See, the fact may point that he stole the pocketbook, or he took a pocketbook, rather, or purse, but it belonged to his mother. And so until something comes against that to rebuttal and say, okay, this stands as a fact until something else comes and shows it that is not true. There is no rebuttal of this book. It is true. It shall always be true. And there is no mistakes in the word of God. It's just our lack of study. A lot of people have gone out to destroy this book for hundreds of years. We have people burning Bibles, coming against it, and it's still here, still speaking, and still increasing the trust of those that believe in God. Do people still believe in, do people really still believe that we've evolved from monkeys? You know what? I saw National, what is National Graphics is called? Geographics. Geographics. National Geographics on a particular episode where they had a guy with a computer or people with a computer and how we came from apes, how we came from monkeys, and they illustrated the DNA. I mean, they had it down packed. What a bunch of filth. What a lie. I refuse to think that I came from an ape. On top of that, I've been to the museum and I've seen the skeletal of an ape and a human and the back of an ape's butt is open, not ours. When did it close? Oh, man. Stupid people. 
I'd ask the question, hey, when did that close? How many millions of years did it take for it to finally close? It's not closed. It's still open. It looks nothing like a human, and it will never be a human. A fish is a fish. A dog is a dog. An orange is an orange. And a screw nut is still a screw nut. <laughs> Facts and evidence may not necessarily be faith. Facts and evidence may not necessarily be faith. Presumption. Although, per although perception may have some facts about truth, it is always open to rebuttal. Man's faith is mixed with presumption outside of Christ. Did you hear that? I had to write that carefully. Man's faith is full of presumption outside of Christ. You will talk about faith with a person who doesn't know Christ, and they will come up with all kinds of concepts, and it gives you no growth. Why? That is confusion. And I believe on the pulpit today, you have, you have preachers and teachers trying to explain faith from the side of presumption and not from the side of truth. And the one that people have questions about the Bible, they're not preaching the truth. They're, they're actually preaching a New Age message that actually brings forth more questions about the Bible than to proclaim the Bible as true. Mm. This is why there are so many discussions about the doctrines of the Bible to try to prove or rebuttal the truth of God. That is absolutely crazy. I am here to defend this truth, to tell you that there is nothing wrong with this book except life. And Jesus said, the words I speak to you are both spirit and life. Let's talk about the rule of guidance when it comes even outside of man's, uh, uh, when it comes outside of Christ, man's presumption. A person may be guided not by truth, but by their perception of feelings and reason. Hmm. Most of the time, it is by something that we see or have perception of, or, or, or is based on something that we may have knowledge of, but all knowledge and man's wisdom may not necessarily be faith. The ability to believe in God or that there is a God may be on, watch this, on the fact or the perception of existing things. And that's okay if a person says, I believe in God. I believe that there's a God. Well, look what James says. You believe that God is one? Good for you. The demons believe also. Watch this. They believe it too. The thought makes them shudder with fear. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to leave this right here because we're going to pick this up from here. I just wanted to bring to you the perception, the presumption of what people think faith is. There's no growth in that. We must still hold on to Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing the word and hearing by the word of God. We're going to pick this up tomorrow and we're going to go past the presumption of faith into the true reality of truth in faith. God bless you. Thank you.